So this video is on excellence in embodied work. So one approach to embodiment just says, well, there's lots of ways to do it and they're all good. And I might actually disagree with that. I'd say there's lots of ways to do good work, but there's some things which usually aren't helpful. Um, this is another feature of what I call this second generational approach to, to looking at embodied coaching. Now, this really came, came into being when Francis and myself sat down at the first EFC, we were planning it out, and we were saying, we're going to examine people. You know, I wanted to make sure there was a standard so that I wasn't um, putting people in the world with a kind of seal of approval on who weren't reaching a standard. Because, um, you know, I think it's common sense. I've been in yoga classes that were great, some that are average, some that are bad. I've been in the same with like, classes, dance, whatever. We're intuitively aware there was some things that, that, that were high quality or some things that high quality teachers did more that often came with experience, but not usually. And some people just seem to get them quickly. So we tried to figure those out. So if we forget examine people, pass, fail, um, then we need, to, we need to be really clear about them and they need to be objective enough they can go across different disciplines. Um, in the EFC exams, people pick very different things to do. Some will be a coaching session, some will be more like Pranamic Yoga, some will be um, a Tango. So you have to have something that's clear. And we have two raters, so this is kind of a test for us, that they, we both have to agree. And that now other people, other than the two of us, have been trained in that. And the agreement on kind of past founders is, is pretty high. It's uh, actually very high. So, um, yes, yeah, so there's some criteria we outlined. So what are some of them, some of the important ones I'll give now? And also mention some of the ways in which we've seen people um, fail the exam or not do so well, have to retake or be a bit marked down on it. Um, so one would be their own embodiment. So every year people do the course, their embodiment really changes and grows. And that's, that's massive, you know, if people are in their bodies, both in the moment, being able to regulate themselves in that way, um, aware of how they're coming across, very, very important, your own embodiment, you know, that's why a large section of this course is, is the body of leadership part, not just the body of coaching. Another one is aim. So um, every year I see a few people go wrong by not giving a clear aim. And it's like, what's the point? Like, why are we here? Um, the aim is in, in a way also the application. So it's how will people use this content, yeah? So also massively important in business that you say, All right guys, here's, here's what we're gonna do, and here's, here's, um, here's why that will benefit you. Yeah, so not just what, but why. Um, so having an aim, that being really clear why you're spending the time, and why you're spending someone's time and money in the business context, very, very important for, for embodied exercises. Another one, a sense of rhythm. So we'll, we'll do another video on this specifically, but there's a way in which any exercise, whether you're coaching or training, has a beginning, a middle, and an end. We sometimes call it a U-curve, yeah? Um, often people don't leave enough time for the end. So sometimes the beginning is too rushed as well. There's this personal embodiment styles that we need to moderate. So there needs to be a lead-in, there needs to be some content, there needs to be a wrap-up. Hopefully you'll see that in this video as well.